Today's topic, Sharon Osbourne. After defending Pierce Morgan, she got into a discussion with Cheryl Underwood, which I'm not going to lie to you guys, I didn't even know the talk was still happening. After I watched that clip many years ago with the cutting off of the Pinor, I didn't know the show was still happening. It was still, it was still happening, right, definitely. So I really would like to know, because I've been knowing you for years Go since on. I've been here, and I've never seen anything come out of you other than if I don't know, I'm willing to learn. If it comes off a certain way, I stand corrected. Right. That's the only thing I've seen. Yeah. So what would you say to people who may feel that you, while you're standing by your friend, it appears that you give validation or safe haven to something that he has uttered that is racist? Even, even if you don't agree, am I, am I saying it right? He, I don't know what he's uttered that's I'm not I'm not trying to slide out of this one. Right. I don't know. Tell me what has he uttered that exist? I feel even mm -hmm. like uh, I'm about to be put in the electric chair because I have a friend who many people think is a racist, so that makes me a racist. And for me at 68 years of age to have to turn around and say, I ain't racist. Right. What's well, it gotta do with me? How can I be about anybody how can i be racist about anybody or anything in my life how can i well well, well, I well what you, we'll, we'll be right well, back what? we have more it's like you're asking you're asking well you know tell me but you're clearly not willing to know tell me yeah what what that's not i don't want to tell you this is what i'm saying i know these Explain conversations ready. can be difficult and i know sometimes yeah. you can feel someone is just trying to lob things at yeah. you but sometimes you got to take yourself out of it just to listen a little bit further so let's just see what happens i've been asking you during the break right. i'm asking you again and don't try and cry because if anyone should be crying it should be me okay all right then. okay okay sorry. this is when you go full on karen because from what i've gathered she's being very calm and trying to talk you through it she's not being aggressive i've seen when people are trying to Try to railroad people off the road and be like, you're right. I've seen that. This is not this that. This is not what's happening. This is not that. I think you're in your feelings and you're getting really heated. And you say, you don't have the... Chill, ma. Chill. This is the situation. Yeah. You tell me where you have heard him say, educate me. Tell me when you have heard him say things. And educate me. Tell me. I think there's something unhealthy about just running up to people like, you're but I also think there is something to be said about the fact that, like, just because I feel a certain type of way, provided I'm not being aggressive towards you and screaming at you, I don't always have the obligation to show you how you're wrong. Sometimes I just want to go about my day. That doesn't mean I'm going to be like, you're racist and walk away. I generally don't do that. But if there's, like, people saying this stuff, you have also a little bit of responsibility to try to do a bit of that research yourself. It is not the exact words of racism. It's the implication and the reaction to it to not want to address that because she is a black woman and to try to dismiss it or to make it seem less than what it is that's what makes it racist. but but right now i'm talking to a woman who i believe is my friend and i don't want anybody here to to l watch this and say that we're attacking you for being and, and and that and and for that, if I articulated, see, she did. She, she wasn't listening. No. She heard from me, and she just felt attacked. This is when you place your feelings over the entire discussion. I understand it can be triggering, or it can get you, but you got to make that effort to listen and to just try to be slightly objective about this. Because she's just like, <laughs> and she's already looking off, yeah, ready to she, respond. She, she, we don't want to attack you, but yeah, like you said, she felt attacked. And the thing is that Cheryl, I believe Cheryl is doing a great job of trying to like, hey, listen, we going to decipher things. So what it is, is what you actually asked for, Sharon. You asked for this, right? And Cheryl is actually doing a freaking good job Super explaining you to you. No, listen, it's not exactly what he said, but it's this and that and that and everything. But you're so busy not listening to what she's saying. As a black woman... Putting herself in the place of another black woman and showing you that perspective. You're so busy not listening. Something that you asked for that it's it's irrelevant whether what she said or not. Let's throw it all in the trash. It doesn't matter because you're not listening. I think it's Anything. too late. I think that okay. seed's already sown. But that that is why I'm <laughs> saying for me. I'm saying for me. For me. I thought I was asking a question 
about uh, the perception for other people. That's why I prefaced it with, I've never heard you utter anything like uh, this, terrible. but I have, but I have felt that Pierce was in his stance against Meghan Markle. And the last time he was on this show, I said as much. I said it when he was on this and show. And what was his answer to you? He's, he didn't feel that, he didn't feel that it was racist. He didn't feel that, that the, the racial statements that he was making were racist. But I was talking to him. Okay, answer me this mm -hmm. one, okay? Because I don't know, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't like someone, and I think this is for everybody who is of born white. If he doesn't, if Piers doesn't like someone and they happen to be black, mm -hmm. does that make him a racist? No. No. That's a no. No. Right. It's not just the fact that he doesn't like her. It doesn't stop there. If it was just the fact that he doesn't like her, then that would be one thing then you rely on the facts. He doesn't even rely on the facts. That's why I noticed in the conversation, if I have to go back to what I said and be like, I thought what I said was a question, which was a question. If I have to verbalize that to someone that I'm talking to and go back through everything that I was saying and explaining it back to you, it's just, that's a clue that you were not listening at all. Because I have to reintroduce what I said. Hey, listen, remember what I said with the question mark at the end? I was just asking the question. It was not an attack. That's because you were not listening the first time. You just got triggered. And that's another proof that she's not listening. Yeah. People always say, like, I'm coming here to listen. And oftentimes they're not willing to admit that they could be wrong. To the possibility. They're not even open to that. This is the kind of conversation that mm -hmm. makes a lot of minorities feel like, I don't want to have to have this conversation yep. trying to educate you yep. because I don't really believe you trying to listen yep. because she's handling it as best as I've ever seen someone handle a racial discussion. She's not even accusing the person across from her, but this person is so triggered and being such a Karen in that moment that she can't take the time to understand. If, if you're not willing to recognize ladies, the ways in which you could be a misandrist or men can recognize the ways in which you'd be a mis misogynist, like if you're not willing to have these conversations and be open to listening to what you don't have them, but don't pretend either that you're trying to listen and learn. A lot of people just want to go to imright.com, hear an opinion that reinforces their belief, and then feel great. But I got black friends and they never talk to me about that. Maybe they don't want to. Because they know you. They don't want to have that conversation with you. Because you're not willing to listen. Because people really oftentimes, they mix up hearing and listening. Hearing is just, you're saying words and I heard what you, I heard you said something. Listening, you actually have to ponder and reflect about what the person said. And that's not what's happening right there. You know what? And you know, right now the show's on hiatus. Recently, I think somebody, the guy, um, some black dude made an interview with Sharon where she could tell all, and then he started tagging like black creators on Instagram. And I think sometimes when it comes to these things, they'll oftentimes prop up a black person to do an interview to make it really look good from a PR standpoint. But I think when it comes to this discussion, like it's not always our job to teach you about this stuff and to tell you, you know, like if you claim you're willing to listen and we've made an effort and you're not willing to hear us, at some point you got to go do your own research because it becomes exhausting to try to tell people, hey, man, you did this wrong and they're not interested in hearing you. That's the times where I'm like, yo, if you don't want to tell them, you don't have to. I get it. You know, in the past, I've said like, guys, if you're not willing to educate, like why? Sometimes it could just be tiring. Sometimes people just don't want to hear it. So I'm just like, you know what? You mean like I'm just going to abstain from this entire conversation because it's a waste of time. Now I see how you roll, and I'm going to move on with my day. Fortunately, Sharon wasn't trying to learn. But it's, and, it's, it's, and, and, you know, when it comes to what Pierce says, like, if you don't see the racial undertones, if you think that protecting the royal family is more important than having this dialogue about, you know, the real reality of what we say to people who have children who are dark, you know, the, 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 the conversation around skin tone and stuff like that. The problem wasn't inherently in what Pierce said. The fact is just that he disregarded anything that could be true about Megan because it appears he has a personal problem with yeah. her. I'm not defending Megan. I'm not doing any of this. Like, Pierce, like, I don't believe that she had a mental breakdown. And, like, and anything that has how to do, would you know? Anything that has to do with the queen, he's going to protect the queen by all means. So therefore, he has his biases. If you silence people or try to silence people or try to mitigate their... Um, you know, their ability to speak or if you essentially with no, because you're a journalist with no proof whatsoever, try to discount someone's uh, testimony, no proof whatsoever as a journalist, just because you want to def defend the queen, you know, and if it relates to r racial things, considering the history of the monarchy and all that stuff, I could definitely see how people would call you a 100%. Do I believe he is? 
Not necessarily. I don't know. But there's a real discussion to be had. And the fact that Sharon's being like, oh my God. I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. This whole thing was weird. Uh, but like I said, that's all I have. Anything else? Yeah.